This uh, story takes place in Montreal, um, like which has been mentioned as a city, as a place a few times tonight. Um, my name, you might have noticed, is unusual. Uh, Eitan is uh, Hebrew, a uh, fairly common name in Israel, um, but my parents uh, spelled it kind of weird uh, for the pronunciation, so uh, it's often mispronounced. Um, Muscat is a somewhat common name in certain parts of the world, but sounds like muskrat, which is very easy to make fun uh, of via that similarity. Uh, and so as a kid, I really hated my name because uh, it was so silly and because it was mispronounced and used uh, for jokes so much. When I was eight years old, I, I had a very frank conversation with my mother about how I would like a normal name like Joe. And why hadn't she named me something normal like Joe? Because that is a normal name and it would be easy to fit in if my name was Joe. Um, I had never really been like, um, uh, we, I'd never been big on hosting parties, but I moved into this one apartment with a couple of like uh, similarly like uh, attempting to achieve some kind of like social sophistication or at least popularity. Two people and we decided we were gonna, this was gonna be like our party house and we were gonna like have house parties, people would come and have fun and then uh, our estimation would go up. Uh, so we, we were doing this and uh, uh, we had our first party and there was like a lot of Montreal uh, apartments because they're built so close together they have courtyards so that all the rooms get light and um, and we had this party that was in kind of the end of the summer, so everyone was in the courtyard, but we made everyone be super quiet because we had super cranky neighbors lived above us that just needed the slightest excuse to call the police. And they did call the police like every single time that we had people over. Even if it was just like 10 people having dinner, they would for some reason call the police. They never came down and were like, could you keep it down? It was just like this, the patriarch of the family, like, had his eyebrows and bottom lip were like super close together. <laughs> so it was just like, rock. Like every time I saw him, it was just like, <laughs> scowl. And, uh, and so like, everyone was in the courtyard, but like whispering. And it was kind of like, kind of like a cool sit-in vibe. We were like candles around and like 60 people in this little concrete courtyard, just like, oh yeah, I take that class. Yeah, it's pretty bright. <laughs> Uh, so, so that one went off without a hitch, and then we had another one uh, kind of in the winter time. It was like January. And, uh, and so I knew that the police were going to get called, and we went up and we rang the doorbell, and we were like, look, we're having a party. It's not going to be too loud, but if it is, just come talk to us. Please don't call the police. It'll be fine. We'll try and keep the music down. We won't step too late. And it was just like... <laughs> uh, so I had this... Theory. I don't know how true this is, but somebody had told me that if the police come to your house and they want to write you a ticket, if you don't tell them your name, they can't write you a ticket, right? You get it? Because like, who are they going to write it to? Uh, and I'd actually been at a party where this was tested, and I didn't see what happened, but at one point, like, the entire party was evacuated by the police. Like, everyone, like, we were, like marched out into the street, like, no more fun, music off, everyone leave. So they might have gotten a ticket, but I don't know, I was out. Uh, so I, I was like, okay, if we get, the police come, I'm just going to do that, I'm not going to tell them my name, what can they do? Uh, so the party's going on, and the police show up, like, a couple times, they come, they, they come, and when the cops get called to a party, they're like, uh, okay, your neighbors called the police, just try and keep it down, good night. So they came, and we're like, okay, we turned it down, they, came back, other cops, and they were like, yeah, they called, they called, they came back a third time, and they were like, look, this is the third time we've gotten a complaint, I have to write you a ticket. So I was like, time for the action plan. <laughs> and I was like, ah, sorry, I don't live here. And, and okay, so I have to say, uh, this is an in essential information, but both police officers were female. There was not anything about their um, competence or their ability to do their job, but I would assume if you were a female police officer, you'd have a lot of people like not giving you the respect that you deserved. So like a lot of basically what I was doing right there, like no, I don't live here. Like I'm there, like I, I don't know, like in my socks, like holding a beer, like sorry, wrong guy. Uh, so she she was like, all right. Um, uh, just, would you, I know you live here, just tell me your name. So, 
I was like, I'm going to make up a fake name. So the first thing that comes to mind and comes out of my mouth is, my name is Johnny Jones. <laughs> So two things about that. For one, I thought, some part of my brain thought that it was such a normal name <laughs> that it would just pass and be like, okay, Johnny Jones and what do you do for a living? But it was apparently so normal that it crossed some threshold of normality into like total garbage. <laughs> and she just like, like stared me down. And then a second after I said it, I realized that Johnny Jones is the secret identity of the DC Comics character Martian Manhunter. Who, for those of you not familiar with this character, he's a giant, green, bald, muscular man in little boxing trunks, suspenders, and a cape with a huge collar. And he chose this name for the exact same reason I did. That it seems so normal that no one would suspect that you're actually a Martian superhero. <laughs> so she says, instead of calling any more doubt onto the name, she asks, would you please step out onto the porch? Which I was confused for by this Martian Manhunter thing, so immediately <laughs> did so, and I feel the cold grasp of steel on my wrist. And then I'm handcuffed and escorted to the back seat of a police car. I had another theory that if I put my feet into the car, the door would close, I would be taken to a, like a secret holding cell, put naked into a cage and spend the night being sprayed by a fire hose. So I thought, I'm just going to keep my feet on the sidewalk. They can't do anything to me. All I've done is have a good time. <laughs> and I won't be escorted away to the dungeon. Which just irritates her even more. So at this point, my friends realize, like, hey! Like, I've already gone up in estimation in people's minds because of my great house parties. So they're all supportive now. Like, hey, he's getting cuffed for no reason. Little they know I'm being cuffed for being a total idiot. <laughs> And they start streaming out onto the street, and like they're all in university, so they have like social justice in mind, and they're like, police brutality, you can't put a guy in a car for a good time, like, what are you going to make, dancing illegal, and then get your truncheons out, put us all in a big, empty prison from THX, where there's no walls, but no freedom in our minds, like, just total insanity. And so she's like, fuck this, and like calls for backup. And then there's three police cars, six cops, like in my mind, pepper spray is being reached for. And like, it's not, nothing's happening. But um, at this point, I, re I re I'm like, oh, these guys, they're gonna fight for me because I'm being mistreated. And then I'm like, oh yeah, this is entirely my fault. I'm just being so stupid. So I say, okay. Johnny Jones isn't my real name. You were right, detective. You got me. So I asked, this is where Danny Zabal appears, because he was at this party. He went in and got a, like a hydro bill and brought it out. And he was like, this is his real name. And she was like, I don't, okay. And just like transcribed it because he didn't know it. Uh, so in the end, I got a $120 noise complaint ticket. Um, and Johnny Jones disappeared from the world, except that one of my friends was so amused by the story that he bought me a flask engraved with the name Johnny Jones. And that friend's name was Joe. <laughs>